this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about inheritance. It's either going to be called <laughs> inheritance or what are you allowing your family to inherit? Inherit. Probably won't be a long one. It'll probably just be inheritance, and people will be like, okay, what? But the reason why I'm calling this inheritance is because earlier today I was listening to a sermon, and the pastor preached about different things that you're doing in your life and how <laughs> just allowing your ear, your eye gates, just different things to influence you in your life. And, and even when it comes to family lines, even when it comes to your bloodline. And when he was talking about bloodline, I started thinking about inheritance and the way my mind works, I'm over analytical. And sometimes I think about stuff when other people are saying things and some, and I try to like focus in on the conversation now and be super intentional about listening to what other people are saying. And so as I am like doing different stuff, I'll listen to someone say something and it, my mind will just go <gasps> and it'll just start like a hundred miles a minute, just going, I get all these ideas and different things. So I have to write it down right then, or I will forget all of it. And so, so I was listening to the sermon. And when he was talking about bloodlines, it made me think about inheritance. It made me think about how sometimes we can think of inheritance of as like the money or the land that you get or the property. But a lot of people don't think about inheritance as what you continue to, to keep in your bloodline, to keep in your family, what you continue to pass on, that jealousy that you have, that, you know, you're never happy for anybody. All of a sudden, all of your family's the same way, you know, or that insecurity that you have when it comes to just finding the worst ways to deal with pain or finding the wor worst ways to deal with whatever's happening in your life, you pass it down. The It could be, you know, something to do with alcohol. It could be something to do with, you know, lust. It could be anything, anything that you are continuously passing down throughout your family is what popped in my mind when I thought of inheritance and I thought about bloodlines. I really thought about well, what is it that you do that is something that your whole family does? You know, and people think it's normal and you're the only person who thinks that something is wrong with it or you're the only person who feels different. And the pastor said something about, you know, it's something, sometimes it'll be something in your bloodline and you felt like you were the black sheep. And he's like, don't think of it as you're the black sheep. Think of the fact that you're called. Because, you know, when you're younger, you hear black sheep kind of thrown around a lot. You know, a lot of people will say, I feel like the black sheep of the family or I don't fit in with everybody else. And you're not supposed to <laughs> fit in with everybody else. You're different for a reason. People keep on thinking, oh, it's something that you know, going on with you and you just are supposed to just conform to the ways of the world when you were always meant to stand out. You are, you have been blessed with this gift because you are the thing that's going to change that thing. So that it won't be left behind in your legacy. It won't be the thing that your family inherit inherits from you. It won't be the thing that you continue to pass on throughout generations to come. It'll be something that can stop with you. You could stop this thing from coursing through your bloodline. You could be the one to change things. And it's so funny because I always felt super different from everybody else everywhere. Like every time I did something, I just... I like real corny jokes. Nobody likes that. They think it's so uncool, but I think it's so awesome because whenever you're making a joke that's not at somebody else's expense and it's just like every time I hear a corny joke, it just does something to me. It's like, oh, OK, <laughs> you know, but other people will be like, mm, OK, that's so corny. And I'm just like, I'm cracking up laughing like like it's the best joke ever. Like you don't even understand. And people will literally look at me like, oh, my goodness, like really? But listen, it's the little things for me. It really is like, you know, you get to a certain age and it's just like you start appreciating everything. You appreciate your family. You appreciate your friends. You, appre you appreciate the real people that are in your life. That's that's going to keep it real with you. They're going to keep it 100 with you. I know. I don't know if people still say that, but they're going to be real honest with you. They're not going to just tell you what you want to hear and be a couple yes people around you I need somebody that's gonna give it to me straight like <laughs> like I need you to be real about it if, if I'm doing something if I hurt your feelings I want to know that I hurt your feelings because I don't want to continuously make that same mistake and if I'm doing something wrong and I care about you 
I don't want to make you feel badly. Like that's never my intention. My intention is not just to go around hurting people. My intention is to speak life into people because I want everybody to love themselves. I want everybody to prosper in life. I want everyone to have the desires of their heart and to follow God. You know, that's, that's what my desire is for everybody. I want everybody to be in a healthy relationship, you know, everybody to be in a healthy kingdom relationship. I want everybody to, to truly know their worth, to know that they deserve better, you know, and not to just settle for anything just because everybody else in the world is settling or what you see on TV or reality shows or wherever else. It just seems like everybody just settles for the bare minimum or breadcrumbs or being treated like less than the best. And I'm not trying to say a blanket statement like every reality show person is treated like that, but majority of the people that you see are treated that way. And I I don't watch reality shows. I used to a long time ago, like probably about, I don't know, I guess it's been about a good five to 10 years ago. I don't know. It's been a really long time, but I remember when I used to watch them, it would just be nothing good. <laughs> you know, it would always be like a bunch of drama. And I know they do that for TV because it's keeping people intrigued and it, it captures their attention and stuff like that. And then you see the women just treat it so badly. And you know, once you just keep seeing it over and over again, you kind of just feel like this is the normal, like this is the norm. This is how everyone behaves in relationships. This is how every relationship is. And that's not true. This is just what's on TV. You know, this is just what's, what a lot of people are settling for because every time they feel like they want to stand up for themselves, every time they feel like they believe in themselves, every time they try to tell somebody that they deserve better, they're tried and tested. And then after they're continuously tested and man after man after man, it's constantly not about intentionality or constantly not about treating their women with dignity and respect or constantly about just trying to be the man instead of being a man. You know, it's just kind of like it, it feels like hopeless, you know, but that's not of God. Like when I was of the world and I was just kind of doing my own thing when I wanted, when, you know, whenever I wanted to do whatever I wanted, I just did whatever I wanted because that's what I wanted for my life. I wasn't living for God. I was just living for myself, you know, and because I wanted something, I did it because I wanted to be in this relationship. I was in this relationship because I wanted to make this decision. I made that decision. I didn't really consult with God. I didn't discern with God if this person was good or bad, or if they should have been with me or not. And just because I'm not with someone, and I want to set this straight because I want to make sure people understand that I'm not saying that just because it didn't work out with someone else or we weren't a good fit does not mean every person was a bad person. You know, people, some people just aren't grace for you. It's just not a good fit because my morals, my values, my my core values, the things that matter to me might not matter to everybody. You know, God might not be every might not be number one in everybody's life, you know, so it's just it's really important. I think to clarify that and to let everybody know that does watch these videos like, hey, I'm not saying that, you know, all of these men are bad. I think there are good people and bad people in the world, regardless. I don't think that there's just all bad men. I don't think there's all good men. I think they are men, you know, and there are women. And we all have choices to make in our life when we make whatever decisions that we make for our lives. Like you can't live for somebody else, you know? And so, (laughs) so, but as I sat there and I really heard this sermon about the bloodline, it made me think about how lately I have just been wanting to do better. You know, Like, I always want to better myself. I'm always talking about all the things that I'm going to do. And sometimes I'll like do things for a couple days or, you know, I might start something. And then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, you know, I'm doing this and I don't see a change or I'm doing this. But you got to keep on going. You can't give up. You can't just do something a little bit and then stop. You have to continuously be willing to work at bettering yourself. And my thing is I'll do something for a little bit and then I'll jump to something else. I might start doing something and then I might start doing something else. And so with this thing, it's like I'm in this season. I want to be about action. I don't want to just say I want to be treated well. I'm I'm going to be treated well, you know, 
it's no, I don't have an, it's not an option. You know, it's not like the next guy that seems like he's everything that I want, you know, not what I need, but everything that I want, who just is looking like he's looking, talking like he's talking, is just going to get, get away with stuff. And I'm praying in Jesus name, God, please <laughs> give me the strength to move them away, whatever you got to do. Like, because, <laughs> you know, sometimes and I got to say this because a lot of people on the platforms and a lot of people different places will say things like, oh, yeah, I just cut them off. Oh, yeah, that's easy for me. Oh, yeah. Like they never get lonely. Like they never have a vulnerable moment or they never get weak. <laughs> the flesh is weak. Like that's even biblical. So it's not I don't want to ever sit here and make it seem like just because I have no problem cutting off people that that's always an easy choice. There's sometimes there's one person that slips through the cracks that literally gives me the bare minimum. And I have to constantly remind myself that I deserve better than that. It's not like a, oh yeah, I know I deserve better. And all of a sudden, every single guy is just, it's like a hard stop and a hard pass. And I'm just so quick to cut people off and I just make all the right choices. Like nobody ever makes all the right choices. And I want to say that to be transparent because I don't want other women to feel like, oh, well, if she's doing this and it's so easy for her, why is it so hard for me to set these boundaries, set these, set these healthy standards and boundaries for me to tell people, no, let my yes be yes and my no be no. For me to like cut somebody off if they're not treating me the way that I should be treated. Why is it so hard for me to require somebody to treat me the way that God wants, wants to treat me? Why is it so hard for me to hold people accountable? And people will say, well, it's because you're insecure, it's because this or it's because that. It could be a whole bunch of different reasons. But what I don't want (laughs) is for women to beat themselves up and then allow the adversary a foothold to get into their life, into their subconscious and and add cynicism and negative self-talk into them trying to improve themselves. Because what most women do And I'm not saying this at all. I'm saying most. What most women do is when we let a guy slip through the cracks, we start beating ourselves up. And it's not because we want the guy to get away with everything. It's because we are so in our heads like, oh, my gosh, you know, I thought I was doing better. And now this guy slipped through the cracks. I thought I was doing better or I really want to be treated this way. And you look around at every single person settling. You you want to do better and you have all these standards and boundaries and you're doing all the right things. And every single guy is not willing to step up. And you just the 10th guy just so happens to slip through the cracks because at this moment you're weak. And it's just like, I don't know if I have any more fight left in me. Like after several men are just not willing to be about intentionality after several men are not willing to step up after several men it's like you know it kind of just feels defeating it kind of feels hopeless it kind of just feels exhausting and it's kind of like and then you have to ask yourself do I really want to be in a relationship or do I just want to be alone you know because really until you meet the person who's grace for you Every person is going to either not be a good fit or not be intentional or not not be willing to step up, you know, and I'm not trying to put it all on guys because sometimes it's we still have work to do. Sometimes it's because we are still broken. We still have healing to do. We still maybe aren't over somebody. If you're not over somebody, then don't date nobody <laughs> like for real. And if you're you know, you're not healed. Like I had areas of my life where I felt like I was healed. And I went into the field and I realized I was not healed, <laughs> you know, and I I wouldn't ever intentionally go out and try to meet somebody or date anybody if I felt like I wasn't healed or if I felt like I wasn't ready because I don't want to un- unintentionally hurt somebody like that's never my intention to just go out of my way to make someone else feel as badly as I did, you know, in the heartbreak stage or whatever else. And I'm not saying somebody that the first person you meet you just meet them and in a day you break their heart like I'm not saying that that at all I'm just saying that you really have to treat people the way that you want to be treated so if you know that you don't want someone to waste your time because you're not ready and let's say they're looking for their wife and you're not ready yet don't make yourself ready just because the this guy seems like a good guy You have to be honest with yourself. And if it's right, if it's supposed to be, then you guys will work out.
I'm not saying just throw away a whole bunch of good guys. I'm just saying don't date at all until you're ready. And it could be a day, a month, a couple months, a year, five years, however long you need. And I know like some single women cringe when they hear five years. It's like five years. I'm not waiting that long. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you what's going to happen if you don't wait. Like I thought a year was good. I thought a year and a half was good. Two, I'm, I'm right about... Am I right about it? Two, two years and like three months or something being single, something like that. Right. And I literally just started feeling like I was ready. I know. And I really try to force myself into it. I think if I didn't force myself into trying to be ready because, you know, decent other decent people and they, you know, the world wants to make you make it seem like there's no good men, but there are good men in this world. There really are. There's a lot of good men. It's just that because we see in the world these highlighted, you know, versions of other men, we think that's the only thing that we could get, but it's not. And so, (laughs) so I just, I think if I didn't force myself to be ready too soon, I probably could have been ready in like, mm, I would say, maybe a year and a half, a little over a year and a half, I probably could have been ready then. Like, I think, mm, let me put it this way. If it wasn't, if I didn't feel pressure to date people when it was like the first year and three months or something like that, if I didn't feel pressured then, and I would have went somewhere, naturally met somebody, they would have been intentional and I would have dated and then God would have like slipped it into it was just just so happened. This was the guy I was graced for. I would have been fine if I felt no pressure at all. And it just flowed. I think I would have been fine. But when someone tries to make you ready and you're not ready, it really puts you and you're not all the way healed. It kind of doesn't put you in the right mindset to really be ready for a relationship or ready to start dating or whatever else. And so I just kind of felt like I just wasn't ready. And God has literally taught me so many things from, from the time that I was trying to force myself to be ready to date till now. Like he's taught me so many things about myself. Like at first I was healing. So God was like, okay, this is the season for you to heal. Then it was the season for me. And I was growing and developing and learning stuff as well, but I was doing inner work but I wasn't being super honest with myself, if that makes any sense. So I was like, oh, I know like surface level stuff, like, oh, I know I need to communicate better. I was like, oh, okay. But when it came to stuff that was deep, like, listen, you're being controlling in this area because you want to be in control of your life instead of releasing control to God. Like stuff like that is like deep stuff that I was like, "Mm," you know, I didn't really want to face it and stuff like being invulnerable. I just thought, oh, well, I just have to be like this because you can't allow anybody to get close to you. And God was like, do you want to be blessed or not? Nah? <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you want a partner or no? You know, and it really, I really had to dig deep and see what was the reason why I was putting up this barrier, why I was trying to push people away, why I was being invulnerable, why I wanted to feel like I needed to have control of my life when God was in control all along anyways. Like I, I made a decision in the past like year and I was like, I'm going to take this job. I took the job, even though God told me not to take the job. I don't know if I shared it on the video or not, but I went back and forth, you know, with God. And I was like, God, should I take this? And I kept hearing God say, stay where I was. And I was like, oh, you know, well, maybe he's saying stay. And then, then like, after I asked him, like maybe the fourth time, he was like, go, if you choose to go, go. And I got, I went because in my mind, I was like, okay, well, God said go, maybe I can go. But really, I should have just stayed because there was no reason to go back and forth with God. I feel like God knew that I was going to make the choice that I needed to make regardless. I mean, I was going to make the whatever the other decision regardless. So I think he just said go because regardless, he was going to work it out for his benefit, you know. And so I went to this place. I worked there and I was miserable. I literally was, I don't want to talk bad about anything or like make it into a whole thing or anything like that, but 
I just felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel like I belonged there. Like at my, the previous job, I felt content where I was. I felt like, okay, you know, I'm, it gave me enough time to spend time with my, my daughter, my family. It, it allowed me to be able to work on my business, do other things that I needed to do. Like, and then I could help out at different areas if I needed to, you know, because the job just allowed me to do all of those things. And I left for a title. I left because, you know, I just liked the title of the other position. And because I thought that that was going to make me happy. And I thought that was going to give me everything that I needed. And it was going to make me feel like I was moving forward. Because at that point, I was in this waiting season forever. Like you saw me on all these videos talking about how I'm waiting. I'm paused. I'm waiting for God's instruction. I'm not doing anything. Like, it's like God was like, write the book. I wrote the book. And then God was like, okay, go do this thing to help out with this, this organization. And I didn't go because I was too afraid. Not because I didn't want to, I wanted to help, but I was just like, ah, oh, but what does it matter if I do it? You know, it's not going to, and the whole time I feel like God was setting it up so that I could do something else in my life. And when I didn't do that thing, God just had me on pause for like six, seven months. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So I had, I didn't do that. And I took the position at the, at this other place just to, for the title and <laughs> It was not a good choice. If I would have stayed where I was and I would have listened to God, I would have worked with this organization. It would have opened doors for my business. It would have allowed me to probably um, have a friend, like the a person that I knew who was wanted to do the same kind of thing that I would have been doing volunteering. It would have helped with that relationship. And then also... It just, it, it would have allowed things in my life to flow. Like I, it, at the time, it didn't seem like it made any sense. Like I was just going to be doing it for no reason. But when I look back at it, I was like, oh, wow, God was lining that up intentionally because he had a plan for me. He just didn't tell me what the plan was. He just wanted me to know, like, this is what I need you to do right now, you know? And so I, I left. And another reason why I left is because the position was going to close. So I was like, okay, well, I only have a certain amount of time before I have to leave. So I've, I've got to find something else eventually anyways. So <laughs> this is how funny it is. I lose my job the same month that the position would have closed at the other job. So I should have just stayed there. And then God would have just worked it out the same way he did. But it's like we, we make these choices in our life, like we're going to really change our destiny, you know, like. And I don't mean like you make good decisions, bad decisions. I mean, like we choose ourselves over God and we end up in the same spot that God wanted us to be in in the first place. Like, regardless, I was going to be in the situation where I wouldn't have, you know, I would have been without work for a week or two or something like that. You know, however long God saw fit. And <laughs> I chose my choice and it was miserable. If I would have chose God's choice, I would have had time with my friends and family. I would have been working on my business. I would have worked with that organization. I would have volunteered for the, the time that it took for me to get into the other position with the title. I could have been volunteering, helping somebody else. But I thought in my head when God told me to do this, I was like, God, I'm going to be working. I don't know how I would ever be able to help them out because I don't know, like the time that they would have needed me would have been the time that I would have been at work. So in my mind, like me as a person, I was just thinking it doesn't make any sense. I, maybe it's not God, because how does that make any sense for me to do this? And I'm going to be working at that time. And I had no idea that I was going to be doing paper that they needed to complete paperwork that was going to take a little bit of time. And I could have worked there and volunteered and helped out all of those people. I could have helped out so many people. I just, I felt so badly after I saw it, after I knew that that was going to happen for that month. I was just like, wow. Like, and even with the other job, I like with the job, if I would have stayed where I was, they were so understanding that if I needed to go help out this, this community or help out this organization once a week, they would have said that was fine. And I would have just worked extra hours and done all of the things that I need to do regardless. You know, it would have gave me the opportunity to do both. 
and I would have been obedient to God. And I just think it's so funny how we always try to make it seem like if we just take a shortcut, if we go our own way, if we do the things that we want to do, then it'll be quicker. It'll be faster. We can get a result so much like we can get there so fast if we take this shortcut here. But we had no idea that the shortcut, the shortcut was going to end up making you feel insecure. The shortcut was going to end up taking things out of your life that you needed for the next level. You had no idea that you were going to be super stressed out and miss time with your friends and family, like important time that you would have needed. You know, you had no idea that that was the only time that you would be able to spend with certain people in your life. You had no idea that God was setting you up to be, to build relationships with certain people. You had no idea that that God had a plan all along and you thought that he forgot about you. You really thought that God was just going to tell you to do something and not have something, something to back it up. Like God wasn't going to back it up. God backs up everything. He has, he has scripture to corroborate all of his claims. Like, you know, everything that he's going to do in our lives is strategically planned. Everything that he has for us is, it's all a part of his plan. And every time I choose my way over God's way is always disastrous. And I say that in these videos and I know you're like, well, you know that because you know about the relationship thing, you know, and it's so true. I knew that and I still made the wrong choice. I'm, I don't ever claim to be perfect. I don't ever claim to have all the answers or anything like that. But I'm telling you now that if you're thinking about making a choice and it's your way or God's way, choose God's way. You might not understand how it's going to happen. It might not make any sense. God might be saying, leave this place and go to this place. And the place pays like I don't know, 50,000 less or something like that. And you'll be like, why would I take a pay cut? Why would I do this? Why would I do that? And God is saying, listen, if you do this, you'll have more time with your family. If you do this, I'll make your business make millions. <laughs> you know, I'll have, I'll make my name great through you. I will use you as an example. If you are working here, it will allow me to set up the perfect love story. You know, like God just has this plan already. Nobody writes a story like God's. Nobody writes a love story like God's. So why do we always feel like we have to put our hand in God's handiwork? Why do we always feel like we got to have our hands in something that's perfectly made? Like we don't need to add any ingredients to God's, <laughs> God's plan for our life. We just have to live it. We just have to be a part of it. Like it's as if it's that recipe, you know, that's been passed down from generation to generation. And you know, the recipe has been so good. Everything in it is perfect. You know, every family member likes it. You got this one person in the family that comes along. It's like, oh, let me just add some cinnamon here because I just love cinnamon. Even though the recipe is perfect, nobody's complaining. Everybody loves it. There you go. Adding your little two cents in there, your little cinnamon <laughs> in God's plan when it's already perfectly made. Why are you destroying the recipe? You know? This is what we do, though. And I know I kind of got a little off track because I was talking to inheritance. Then I'm talking about God's plan. But listen, God always planned for you to be exactly who you are. God never intended for you to be like anybody else. The reason why you're different is because you will notice things that nobody else in your family does. You'll notice things. Things will stand out to you that won't make sense to anybody else but you because that's the gift that God placed on you. Like I always thought it was, I I always, when I would see people treated badly in relationships or whatever else, and I wasn't always like the best relationship person. So I'm not saying this from a like a, oh, I was so perfect and everything else, but it never set right in my spirit. Talking about people, it never set right in my spirit, treating people badly in a relationship. Like I would do things and I would feel so convicted every single time. Every time I, I said something or did something that was that was not God, everything, every time I did something that was, it, uh, I mean, it ate, ate me up inside, like my soul couldn't rest, you know, whenever things like that would happen. And some people like I don't have people that I hung out with back then or something else. And it just it never affected them in any way. It was just like, oh, OK, whatever. You know, you just got to do what you got to do, you know, and I'd just be like.
you know, it just, it wouldn't feel right to me. It would always just like keep on, it would, it would keep convicting me. I keep hearing it over and over again. Like I needed to rectify the situation. Like I needed to make it right. Like I needed to do the right thing. And I always thought something's wrong with me because why is it that the people that I'm hanging around, other people that I see just feel like this is normal. Like you could treat, you're supposed to treat people this way. You're supposed to say things like this. You're supposed to do stuff like this. And the, in the, but I'm just like, but this is a good person. Why would you ever do that to them? You know, this is like this, this is, why are you talking to them like this? You say that you care about them, you know? And, and I would say things about relationships. Like I want somebody that's going to treat me like this, this, and this. And, you know, I want to be treated like this. And people will look at me so weird and so crazy. Like nobody treats anybody like that. You know, these men, all they do is, you know, you know how you got that one person that's always trying to dog out men or dog out women. But I was just always like, this is what I see. Like, this is what I would want. This is, this is how it should be. Like, why we want the same thing, you know, for the most part, unless you're just not there yet, you know, but we want the same thing. So why are we pretending like treating somebody badly is going to give you what you want? You know, why are we pretending like I don't know. It just never made sense to me. It never made sense to to just be with somebody who's going to treat you badly. It never made sense to settle. It just, it always, it always un, was unsettling to me. And it wasn't until, <laughs> it wasn't until after or towards the end of the 15 year relationship when I started really rededicating my life to God, reading the Bible, spending time with God. Like I would pray here and there. I mean, I pray every day, but I was, I was doing like short prayers and, you know, I was, I wasn't seeking God's face, but I was reading the Bible or I was reading the Bible sporadically, but I was praying every day. You know, I was doing stuff like that, but I wasn't being, I wasn't just into it, like as into it as I was now. I was like, okay, let me talk to God at this time. You know, I had a time set or like it would be middle of the day, you know, lunchtime or something like that. And I would reserve that for God time or whatever, you know, and <laughs> I just, I I ran across this video from Tony Gaskins and I'm, I'm only saying the name because I feel like it might be helpful, helpful for some other people who feel like me, who were just like, this can't be the best. Like you're really saying that we need to be settled. We need to settle for being treated like this. Like, why is this okay? You know, it never felt right to me. I was like, okay, well maybe everybody's supposed to be miserable is what I was telling myself, what I felt was reality because I was like okay everybody complains about relationships everybody you know is saying how much they can't stand the person they're with everyone is talking about you know it just seemed like everyone was just so miserable in their relationships and I was just like this is just normal you know this is what everybody does (laughs) you know I thought everybody was gonna eat the cake you know I just I really felt like that and when I saw that video and I, I had prayed to God first and I said God you know I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, but this is not it. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this another day. I'm tired of doing this. I want something different. I want better for my life. I need you. I mean, I literally was at the lowest point in my life. I was crying out to God, like crying tears, like the whole, like the U-G-L-Y face. Like I, I looked a hot mess. I looked a hot mess. I was, whoo, <laughs> it was rough. I was rough, like, ooh, it was crazy. And as I cried out to God, the video came up. And it just, it wasn't that I watched any of his videos before. It wasn't that I had heard or anything. Cause I was just, I was in the world. You know, I was just so focused on just being enthralled in the relationship. I was just so focused on just, just settling. You know, I was just so focused on this is just how it is. I didn't even think about there being anything else. And when I cried out to God, it's like he placed everything in a line. Like, here's some books. Here's this. Here's a video. Here's here's inspiration. Here, Like everything that I needed was right there. I used to do this thing when I first started reading the Bible. I would pray to God and I would say, God, you know, I don't know what to do <laughs> in this moment. This is going to sound so silly, but somebody's going to start doing it now. And I would say, God, I don't know what to do in this moment. And I would take the Bible and I would go, I would flip through. Let me, I got a Bible right here. I would flip through and I'd be like this. And then I would just stop on a page. And as I stopped on a page, 
it would it would be like I would just look right down and whatever the first thing was that I looked down at, I would read. And <laughs> it's so funny because when I just did this, it popped on Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. Mm. it's about jesus performing a miracle and asking him why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts which is easier to say your your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk but i want you to know that as a son of man the son of man has all authority on earth to forgive sins so he says to the paralyzed man get up and take your mat home Mm. even that preaches I'm not about to just go into a whole sermon mode and be like you know sometimes when you just seek God <laughs> when you're seeking his face he will just make a way out of no way like it might seem like it's impossible like this paralyzed man who just sat there thinking that there was no way that he was going to be able to ever walk again he literally was just there he was just there and in the right place where Jesus placed him mm -hmm. See how I just walked right into the story that I was telling? We keep on going on this journey on our life. Like we're really trying to do things our own way. We're going our own path. We're taking shortcuts. We're doing all of these things. And the whole time, God is saying we need to be exactly where we need to be. Exactly where he appointed us to be. Because if we're not there, we're, going to, we're not going to receive the blessings that God has for us. Like this man would have never received the ability to walk if he wasn't in the right position, if he wasn't in the right place. Mm, 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 mm. won't he do it <laughs> i'm serious though like sometimes we really try to get in our own way instead of being obedient to god instead of listening to the things that he wants for us to do we really just go out do what we want to do and we end up right back in square one until we're we're ready for god to take the lead until we're ready to be obedient in the position where god placed us god is telling you to do things in your life be this place do this thing all you have to do is be obedient and follow his instruction because his story is flawless the the journey that he set forth for you in your life is is perfect it's it's fixed to perfection if i'm in the place where i'm supposed to be i'm getting the job that i'm supposed to have my business is doing the things it's supposed to do if i'm supposed to be in my business if god wants me to do something else i'm doing that you know if God is saying be at this place because he wants me to volunteer, then maybe volunteering and me serving is where I meet my husband. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes God just needs you in position so that you can receive all of the things that he has for you. Like the man who is paralyzed with the ability to walk, you might be praying, God, I just I really want to just be prosperous. God, I really want this thing. And God is saying, OK, keep walking. And you're like, I've been walking a mile, God. I really want this thing. God's like, keep walking. And you're walking and the thing is sitting right in front of you. Because God knew it was there. It was just waiting for you to get in position. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's literally how God works. And so, in conclusion, when it comes to your inheritance, make sure that you're setting a good example. That if you are the one who is chosen because you you are called. And and I'm not saying it because I'm trying to be like a cliche or like, you know, just trying to fit into like some kind of box, you know, or anything like that. I'm saying, though, instead of thinking of yourself as a black sheep, if you're thinking of yourself as called, if you are somebody that's called and you're supposed to change things in your family or you see something that's wrong, you're the person who's supposed to fix that problem. And you have to be in the right position. You have to be obedient. You have to be willing to speak up. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you know that, you know, the whole family has this problem with, you know, alcohol or they have this problem with smoking or they have this problem with whatever it is and you don't want to do that. You're different. Sorry. My hair is like, I put, <laughs> I always have to explain, but I put like this gel on my hair and towards the end of the night, it's like, like it just it starts getting ready to curl up. I even try to put it in a bun and like wrap it around and everything. And the hair just does whatever it wants. Like it really does. Like 
you see I got like this whole thing going on or whatever and I could work out right now all of this would be frizzy like it would be like little curls <laughs> sticking up on top and then in the middle <sighs> it's just the whole thing but anyways <laughs> whatever you want your inheritance to be like if you want to be the one that changes things because you are called for this then you have to let your yes be yes and your no be no. You have to be intentional with your life. You have to be willing to seek God's face. And I say that because we can't do it alone. God has given us everything that we need as long as we stay on the path that he set forth for us. Sometimes we can get distracted like me and get turned around, but you don't want to keep starting at the, stop, at the start line. You want to start on the journey. You want to be in the journey when God is telling you the next move to make. So that you don't get preoccupied, so that you don't make the changes wait, because sometimes somebody else is waiting on you. And if you keep on taking detours, you will never get to your destination. If you keep on taking detours, your husband is going to have to continuously keep waiting for you because you won't make the right decision, because you won't continue to stay focused on the path that God set forth for you. I know it's like a huge, like, thing to put on somebody and for men too you keep on like entertaining all of these things that are not the thing that you want and I, I'm not trying to get on anybody I think that everybody's grace for somebody and every there's somebody for everybody like you know I really do believe that and every time you say that you want a wife but you settle for something else you are literally making your wife wait longer and longer for you Women too. I'm not just saying it just to get on men. I'm just saying it to go so I can cover the whole thing. You know, <laughs> women too. Every time you, <laughs> every time you call that guy who's a friend who is there and they, they really like to talk. And so you have like that male voice, that tone that you get to talk to because you're not really talking to anybody or you meet guys and it doesn't really work out. Every time you settle for that friend, every time you settle for that guy that you're not really into, every time you you talk to or you date or you get in a relationship with a guy that you know is not equally yoked with you, your husband is waiting longer and longer for you to get it together every single time. That's one of the reasons why I don't settle if I'm being real for the most part. I don't say I, I get tripped up every once in a while, but for the most majority of the time I do, I do have a good focus and I pray on all the rest of it because I can't do it alone. I need God for real. <laughs> so. So whenever I meet someone and they're not equally yoked or, you know, it's someone who I'm friends with, I might say hi or something like that, but I'm not trying to give them that type of vulnerability. I'm not trying to give them the part of me that's reserved for the person that God has grace for me. You know, I'm not trying to just settle for somebody that's equally unequally yoked. I'm not trying to just settle for someone who who is not about that that God life or about intentionality. I want to make sure that I'm reserving myself for the person who God has for me. And I'm not saying I don't date other people or, you know, I'm not just, you know, living my life. I'm not just gonna put my life on halt because who knows when that person is going to come or if that person could be one of the next people, you know, the next set of people or whatever. I don't know. I don't know why I said set, but you know what I mean? One of the, the people that you meet. So I'm living my life with intentionality, staying focused on God. I'm making sure that if there's something that I do wrong, me personally, this is like the thing that I've been doing. I want to be about action. I don't want to just say, I don't want to settle for anything less than God's best and then keep settling for less than God's best with every, every blue moon, every once in a blue moon. I want to make sure that every single time I make the best decision. If I'm tired, if I'm hungry, if I don't have enough energy, I don't need to be dating nobody, you know, because that's when you make your worst decisions. That's when you settle for things that you would never settle for in the daylight. You know, that's when you really just lower your standards. You lower your intentionality. Instead of you being intentional and focused, you become unfocused and unstable. You, you end up making really bad choices in your life. And I want everybody to prosper and do well. So especially if you have children, I have to drop this in there, but if, especially if you have children, you definitely don't want your child to end up settling for breadcrumbs from some man. You definitely don't want her to end up 
feeling like she doesn't deserve all of the things that God has for her. If you wouldn't let your daughter settle for that, you don't need to settle for it either because a lot of children do by what they see and not by what you say. So you have to be real and be about it. You have to be about intentionality. You have to be about setting standards and boundaries, healthy standards and boundaries. You have to be about that God life. I mean, you got to be about action for real. It's nice that you can say a good, you know, phrase and be all rah-rah and, oh yeah, I'd never do. Look, <laughs> if you say you'll never do it, never say never, first off. And also, if you say never and you do it anyways, you might as well not say anything, you know, because your child is picking up on your action, not by your words. And for me, although I ha- I do good most of the time and I get tripped up every once in a while, I can't even let my child see the once in a while because I don't want her to ever think that's acceptable, to ever feel like it's okay to accept breadcrumbs from from somebody, to never be treated the way that God intended for her to be treated, to never be honored or respected. I want to make sure that she gets the best of everything that she needs. And I want God's best for everything that I need. I don't just want what I want no more anymore. I want to make sure that I don't just settle because If I settle for it, like let's say, I always throw in a little example, but let's say God's like, oh yeah, somebody's like, here's a hundred dollars. And you're thinking a hundred dollars is good. Oh yeah, you know, I had zero dollars. A hundred dollars is good. I'm just going to accept it. I'm going to be content with a hundred dollars. Am I going to be grateful for a hundred dollars? Yes. But if I know God has a million dollars for me, I'm not about to settle for a (laughs) hundred, you know? So you have to make sure that you are leaving behind something that is going to make your family proud. You want to make sure that the inheritance that you leave behind is not going to be something that's venomous. It's not going to be something that's seeping into your bloodline that is going to destroy your whole family. You want to make sure that if you see something that's a problem, it ends with you. You don't want your the next generation fighting a battle that you could have won that you could have conquered, conquered, that you could have ended. If you know this is an issue, you have to stop it because you can do anything, especially with God in your life. I was going to say the whole scripture, you can do all things through, through Christ who strengthens you, but you know, just make sure you stay focused in your life, vigilant. You want to make sure that you You are aware that the reason why the attacks are so so hard, so heavy, the reason why the adversary is constantly always trying to get after you is because he knows that you are the one that's going to change things. He knows that what God has for you is so amazing that if he can stop you, then he never has to worry about you defeating him. So if you're like me and, you know, you made some bad decisions and maybe you want to make better decisions. Definitely seek God. Call on him when you need his help. And follow his guidance. Don't just do what the people of the world do. Don't just do what your family did. Don't just do what your friends did. You know, you have to make the best choice for yourself and be about that action. Because if you want somebody else to be intentionally intentional and, you know, making sure that they are not just talking a whole bunch of words but they they actually are backing it up then you're going to need to back it up in your life you're going to need to to have I want to say standards but you just you just need to really be focused in your life on God just focus on him and he'll lead you the rest of the way if you're unsure don't make a decision you know if you're unsure just wait until God answers you if you're unsure Continue to consult with God, but you have to build that relationship with him to hear him. You're not just going to hear him when you ask him a question because you want to know A or B or you you want to make a bunch of money or you want to be known or something like. I really have been praying this prayer lately, and I I think it might help some people or, you know, you could steal it if you want to. But I've been praying like, God, you know, just use me so that I can make your name great. When I pray about the relationship. I say, God, I pray that, you know, you send me the kingdom spouse who together we can make your name great. We can be a representation of the kingdom of God. 
when I pray about being a good person, I say, God, you know, just continue to guide my footsteps so that I can be the type of person who can be an ambassador of the kingdom so that I can set a good example for younger women or maybe even older women. Like, I just want to be the things that you created me to be, nothing more, nothing less, because God is the God of abundance. Everything that he's given me is enough. You know, God is enough. (laughs) 